Sales here with Slice Marketing. How are you today? So you know, every day I wake up wondering what I'm going to be talking about. I have made the decision this year to create videos and share my experiences in the hopes that it will help you. I want to help more. You know, I pray every morning when I wake up after my Tai Chi and Qigong sessions. I pray to God to guide me into helping others more because I realize that especially now, nowadays, after COVID-19, after the pandemic, people have been so isolated that they've had to battle with their own minds. You know, I see the 21st century as the battle of our minds. We may not face physical war in the United States anyway, but we are facing a mental war and it is a war with ourselves. We have to face ourselves every day and we have to find the inner strength to move on with our lives and to find some type of a purpose. It is hard sometimes to get up and find the strength to carry on. Many times in my life I have faced myself with wondering if I wanted to live again or if I wanted to continue living more accurately. But because I am a Christian, I know that there is no alternative. I know that whatever we go through in life, we have to go through to take us to the next level. We have to get lessons. Life is not supposed to be easy. It is supposed to be challenging us so that we grow mentally first uh, to allow ourselves to find something that not only give us some motivation, but also give us something to share with the world that will make the world a better place. I am a dreamer. I believe it's possible. You know, sometimes people think that when we dream too big, nothing can happen. I am the opposite. I think that when we dream big, this is when things happen. So today I'd like to share with you some of my experiences because a lot of people that I know and people that I don't know that see me wonder, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? What is the motivation behind it? You know, why are you doing this by yourself? Why are you alone, Catherine? Well, I'm going to address that and in order to address that, I will share some of my life and what I had to go through to reach this moment in my life where I feel like it is time now to open up. It is time now to be entirely authentic. And it is time for me now to be humble and to be vulnerable. Very often we are scared of sharing our own stories because we feel or we fear judgment. I don't think this way anymore, which is allowing me to open up. It's not that I don't care about what people think. I do care about what people think. But the difference is now that I don't allow this to stop me from doing what I know I have to do. So here's the big difference. And I have been able to achieve this because of enough self-esteem that I have built that brought me the self-confidence to just do what I'm doing right now. And I was talking with my daughter yesterday and I explained to her there's a difference between self-esteem and self-confidence. If you don't have enough love of self, you will not be able to build the self-confidence to go after intuitively, you know, and you have to go after. And the only way to find your freedom the only way to find that inner peace that will allow you to go after your dreams is to build that self-esteem and that self-love. Without that, nothing is <clears throat> truly going to happen. You're going to find barriers or you're going to find lessons that will come your way that will guide you in that specific direction. So today I'm going to share my childhood and where it took me and every day I will share another time of my life. I was born in France in 1964. Yes, I am getting old. I am 50, 56 years old and in June, on June 1st, I'm turning 57 years old. But I don't see that as a hindrance. We live in a society where age seems to be a barrier. Well, I think the opposite. I think age 
brings you enough wisdom that you can share with others that allows you to share some experiences that will make a difference in other people's lives. So I see it myself like that. So I was born in a little village called Tuna in France, next to Grenoble, next to the Alps, from a family of entrepreneurs. My, on, on my father's side, my grandfather invented one of the first paper machines. His name was Alib, A-L-L-I-B-E. And he worked very hard to build this company to invent one of the first paper machines. And he got a patent that he was able to sell to an American uh, investor, uh, which allowed him to develop this business where he was building huge paper machines. So I spent a lot of my childhood walking through the, the, uh, the manufacture, spending time with the workers, looking at the paper paste and how it was created and how it it went from paper paste to actual paper. It was fascinating. On my mother's side, my grandfather was a, also a businessman. He was also in the paper industry, but he was also a politician. He believed that people had to reinvent the way they were thinking about politics, that it was not just a left side or a right side. He wanted to create something that was more centric that would combine some elements of capitalism as well as elements of socialism. So he built a party called Parti Social Democrate, and he was a candidate at the presidential elections, I think it was in 1974. I was young then, obviously, and uh, he grabbed some percentage of the votes, not huge amounts, and he, de he decided to not pursue his political career because of the level of corruption. Are you surprised? Look at what's going on right now in the world. At the highest levels of politics, there is corruption. And if people don't fall into some elements of that corruption, they may not be able to go as far as they would want to go. So it's another subject I'm not going to go in this right now. So bottom line, I was surrounded by entrepreneurs. I was surrounded by people who took risks and who believed in going after their dreams. This is all I saw. As a child, this is the example that I was surrounded with every second, which taught me that anything is possible. And it's interesting because at the age of five years old, I remember, and believe me, there are lots of things I don't remember anymore, but I remember at the age of five years old, I said to my mother, mom, I don't belong here. I don't belong in France. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I'm going to go somewhere. I want to discover the world. I don't belong here. Isn't that amazing? And it's interesting because everything I have done in my life was to get out of France and discover the world. I am fascinated by the world. I'm fascinated by cultures, by the way people think differently, by the way people live, by the infrastructure of the various countries, by the... Um, design of homes and cathedrals and mosques and everything in other countries. Uh, it's, it's fascinating to see how big the world is and how different we are from one another. That understanding of differences made me become, I think, more open-minded as to accepting others and accepting the way they think, accepting the way they live their life and not be so judgmental. But it took me a while to um, truly understand what it is I wanted to do. Of course, at five years old, you don't know, it's an intuition. And then you realize, I need to get out, I need to discover the world, I need to talk to people, and I need to grow by discovering the world. So of course, I traveled the world. At the age of 25, I had a job that allowed me to work uh, for a company in France that needed to expand their market internationally and to sell their cast iron parts in countries that needed cast iron parts. So as a 25 year old woman, I decided to go to countries that needed that type of products, obviously, but I wanted to go to countries that did not want to do business with women. That was a challenge then, right? And I was 25 year old, full of ambition, uh, and um, I said to the owner of the company, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to countries that have the money, that have a need for this type of products. 
But most importantly, countries that need to deal with something or someone they are not used to dealing with. And why is that? Because in marketing, you have to create a huge elements of differentiation in order to be remembered. So guess what? As a 25 year old woman, I was remembered in Bahrain, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, in Northern Africa. And I decided to speak and work with governments in those countries and to work with companies in those countries that needed their product. The first receptions were not so positive. I remember coming to a meeting in Bahrain where I arrived in a huge meeting room with men all dressed in white, sitting around this table, there were about 10 of them. And I came in and I sat down, I was told to sit down and wait a few minutes. And after five minutes, I looked around and I asked them, are we going to start the meeting? And the guy at the very end of the table, the big chief said to me, well, we are waiting for your boss. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean you're waiting for my boss? Uh, there's nobody else coming in. You have to work with me. I am the boss. But the, the look on their faces then was pretty, some, pretty incredible. I wish I had had a camera and I took a picture of that. But it took them a while to warm up to that idea that they had to work with a 25 year old woman to spend literally millions of francs then or millions of their own currency to get products they needed for their manufacture. Well, it took me a few visits and it took me agents, local agents, to help me warm them up and to help prove that we were able to deliver, to finally get some orders and to finally grow the business that I was representing and save them from going bankrupt. So that was an amazing experience. And that was one of my ways of discovering the world and impacting the world, but most importantly, impacting people's minds. Sometimes we are stuck in our own ways. Sometimes we are stuck in our beliefs and we have a hard time breaking those walls that we are creating for ourselves because we are not exposed to something completely different. So that was one of my experiences of, of traveling the world and discovering the world, which is interesting because it takes me back to the time I was five years old, where I said to my mother, I don't belong here. That confirmed that I really did not belong in France and I had to go and discover the world. So a lot of elements in my childhood came back to confirm that intuition inside of me, maybe I was not made to be there, maybe I, I was born in France by mistake, I'm not sure. But the bottom line is, I just went with my intuition, my feelings, and I wanted to, to do something else to, um, to feel good and to feel that I was growing and to feel that I was discovering something almost every day to, to maintain some type of interest in life, right? So I'm not gonna spend a lot more time here because I will make this video much too long, but I will address some other elements uh, in other videos. What I wanted to say today, and that's something I'd like to, to, for you to remember today, is that you have to have enough self-esteem to be able to intuitively listen to what your soul is telling you to do what your soul is telling you to spend a little bit of time on. And when you add prayer to it, then you receive guidance that is going to take you there. And it is hard sometimes because our minds are so busy. Our minds get so much information and so much clutter and so much disturbance from a lot of various places, from the media, from our friends, from our family from our loved ones. We have a tendency to listen too much what comes from outside of us. But when we really are able to develop enough inside calm and <clears throat> inside peace, then we are able to listen to our intuition and listen to guidance that is coming our way. Because there's always guidance coming our way, but we often cannot hear it because of all those disturbances. So try to step out of your standard habits. Try to do something different every day to start initiating change that you probably need at this point and 
go in nature to do this. Nature for me is one of the incredible environments that allow me to get that type of guidance. That guidance can, can come from a lot of different places, but when you are in nature, not surrounded by millions of people, you are able to get messages and get feelings that will guide you in the direction that you need to go right now. So that's my little um, video for today. Hopefully you find it interesting. I will have others as usual. Have a wonderful day. Talk soon. Bye.